Bruchem Aboyim. I want to thank everybody for coming. This week's uh, lecture um, is the second lecture I've done on the topic of truth. Um, I've come across some very interesting information on truth that I wanted to share. So before I do that, I would uh, like to quickly review some facts about truth that I had mentioned previously in my lecture. So the word, Hebrew word for truth is the word emet. It is spelled with an aleph, a mem, and a tuf. And the gematria, the numerical value of the word emet is 441. Again, by adding up the aleph, which is 1, the mem, which is 40, and then 400 for the tuf, 441, 441 is 9, taking what we call misbar cotton. So if you add what we call, again, misbar cotton, lower case numbers, which means taking away the zeros, the word of uh, emet has a numerical value 4, 4, and 1, which is 9. So the number 9 is used in exp as an expression of truth. All the letters of emet, of truth, stand on two feet, solid. They include the first, the middle, and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Truth encompasses everything. Now the word for false in Hebrew is sheker. It is spelled shin, kuf, resh. Again, the, uh, the gematria of the word of shin is 300, kuf is 100, resh is 200, so 3, 1, and 2 equals 600. Again, if we add the misbar cotton of the word dropping the zeros, the word then has numerical value of 6. So the number 6 is used in expression of falsehood. All the letters of sheker, of falsehood, stand on only one leg, shaky. All these letters are next to each other, as the last three out of four letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Falsehood is limited and must feed off of itself. Now one of God's names is the word emet, truth. God opened and closed the words of creation with his name. If you take the last letter of the first three words of creation, Bereshit bara Elohim, in the beginning created God, they spell the word Emet. If you take the last letter of the last three words of creation, bara elokim la sot, which God created to do, again, they spell the word emet. So God, so to speak, signed his name to the beginning and the end of creation. Now, truth was a trait that was associated with the greatest of the prophets, Moshe, as we learn in the Gemara, in the Talmud in Baba Basra, 74a, where it states that Korach and his followers say daily from their place in purgatory, Moshe v'toraso emet, that Moses and his Torah are true. As we know, it was Korach that rebelled against Moshe and tried to take away the leadership. Um, and again, so this is a constant thing from purgatory that he repeats over and over again. Also, the greatest of the forefathers, Yaakov, as we say in our morning prayers daily, in Psalm 119, verse number 142, Titain emet Yaakov, that he gave truth to Jacob. Now, truth is the foundation of everything. As it says in Psalms, <clears throat> Tehillim 83, verse numbers 3, Olam chesed yibane, the world was created for kindness. The numerical value the gematria of the word chesed, chet, samach, and dalid, 8, 60, and 4, equals 72. 7 and 2 is 9. So truth is the basis of everything. Without truth, nothing can exist. God created truth. Man created falsehood. Falsehood can only exist if it is founded on a truth. Otherwise, it will crumble and fall immediately. But falsehood based on a truth can exist forever. An example of that would be Christianity and Islam. Though they are both false, they have existed for centuries. They have passed what we call the test of time. How? The answer is because they are both based on the Torah, the Old Testaments. We also see with the incident of the spies that before they spoke badly about the land, first they made sure to praise it with statements that were true. 
then they built their lives on those truths. So truth is the basis of everything true and real in this world. I mentioned before that any number that is multiplied by the number nine, again the mispar cotton of the word emet, truth, will always come back to nine. What does that mean? For example, two times nine is 18. One and eight is nine. Three times nine is 27. Two and seven is nine. Seven times nine is 63. Six and three is nine. This will always be the case. It doesn't make a difference how far you go out. If you multiply any number, no matter how great it is, it will always come back to nine. Why? Truth never changes. It remains constant. However, what is true in one situation may not be true in another. As I mentioned in my previous lecture, if we take a multiple choice exam, the first three answers are wrong. The fourth answer is correct. However, the fifth answer is definitively correct. So if the fifth answer is not there, then four would be the correct answer. But when the fifth answer is there, then four is wrong. Now this thought can be seen in the English numbers of both six and nine. Again, six representing evil, nine truth. They do look alike. The six is upside down, and upside down nine. So the side of evil tells us that the six, which represents falsehood, is really a nine. And it is true that that is the case. The number just fell over. But another illusion of these two numbers can be seen that the number nine can be true at times <clears throat> and be a nine, and yet at other times it can be false and become a six. Again, for question four and question five. This then becomes the true challenge of life. To be able to differentiate between that which is true, a nine, and that which is false, a six. Now this Shabbos, a friend of mine came up to me and told me something that he had heard on a tape from a Rabbi Rosenblum. He had stated on this tape that if you take a word such as a noun or really any word in the Torah and add up its gematria, its numerical value, and then if you subtract the mispar cotton, take away the zeros of that word, it will always add up to nine, truth. Now to tell you the truth, that blew me away. Because it sounds great, but I didn't really believe it. So, for example, take the name Moshe. Mem, Shin, He. So, if you add them up, Mem's 40, three, Shin is 300, 340, He is 5. The miracle value, 345. The Mispar Cotton, again, you add 3, 4, and 5 together, equals 12. Now, if you subtract the number 12 from 345, what you get is 333. 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9. Take another word. Oritz. Eretz. Land. Aleph Reish Sadik. Numerical value of 291. The Mispar Cotton, without zeros, is 2, 9, and 1. Again, 12. If you subtract the number 12 from 291, you get 279. 2, 7, and 9 is 18. 1 and 8 is 9. Take another example. Shemayim, heaven. Shin, mem, yud, mem. The miracle value of 309. The mispar cotton is, again, we drop zeros. So it's 3 and 9, which is 12. If you subtract the number 12 from the number 309, the gematri of the word Shemayim, you have 297. 2, 9, plus 7 is 18, 1 and 8 is 9. So, I have to tell you, I, I thought that was really pretty amazing. I was blown away. And I told this fact to another person because I found it so interesting. And he thought about it, and he said to me, you know, that really should work with any number, not just the gematrias of words in the Torah. And so, I tried. I took a small number, 53. Five and three, add it together, is eight. Eight from 53 is 45. Four and five is nine. So I tried a larger number. 
872. If you take 8 and 7, it's 15. 2, 17. 1 and 7, it's 17. If you take 17 and subtract it from 872, what you have is 855. 8 and 5 and 5 is 18. 1 and 8 is 9. So I thought, you know what? Let me try it on a really large number. So I took a number just randomly. 35,689. Just out of the blue. Adding up the numbers of 35,689 what you come up to is 3, 5, 6, 5, and 8 is 27. And if you add 2 and 7 together, 9. Again, it just blew me away. But what it says to us is even more important. It's not just because it's cute. What it's really saying is that everything in the world, everything in creation, everything is based on MS, 9, truth. This is the essential ingredient for something to exist in this world, it has to have a foundation of truth. Otherwise, it'll just disintegrate. Even falsehood must have a foundation of some truth for it to exist for more than a moment. Now, the world around us has changed. It used to be that if you saw something on television, or if you read something in the newspaper, you could believe it, and you knew it was true. You didn't even think about it. Of course it's true. You heard someone say it on television. You heard someone read it in the newspaper. Not so today. It seems almost impossible to know what is true and what is false. People just blatantly lie to your face. And it's hard to know who or what to believe. But what we do know is Moshe Vitoroso Emmet. That Moshe and his Torah that he gave to us from God Almighty is the only truth that exists in this world, 100%. May God bless us to be able to find truth in all that we do and all that we say. And with that, may we herald in the coming of Mashiach Tzikainu quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. God bless and always stay true.